Good morning, Facebook. Man, I know I gave y'all guys a word this morning. That was a word to encourage you. Amen, that the Lord is faithful. Praise God. Um, I'm at work, so you guys are going to have to just bear with me walking around trying to do some things. Uh, the other day I was going to give a... I was going to make a video. And, um, and I fell asleep. And then... I woke up and, and I and I and I made a, a status saying uh, I fell asleep and I and I gave you guys a question to pray about. I gave you guys a question the other day to pray about. Good morning, good morning, cousin. How are you? Praise God in the name of Jesus. You're gonna want to listen to this. You're gonna want to listen to this and you're gonna want to share it. Um, so the other day I gave a status and I asked a question, and the question that I had asked was. Are you the murderer, or are you the accomplice to murder? Are you an accessory to, to the murder? Okay, and I'm going to explain this, guys. This is how this is a powerful word. What I'm going to talk about today is something that most preachers won't preach about because it's not socially acceptable. It's not. Uh, it's not acceptable nowadays. Why? Because what I'm going to talk about today. We're going to have to change some things in our lives, okay? What we're going to be talking about today is sin. We're going to be talking about sin in our lives. Amen? We're going to be talking about sin. And you know what? That's not socially acceptable. Because if I tell you that you can't do something because the Word of God tells us that it's wrong, now I'm judging you. Now I'm judgmental. Now I'm self-righteous. Now I'm prideful. Now I'm a Bible thumber. Now I think I'm better than you. Now, I'm not being an accountability partner. I'm, I'm being a judgmental, putting myself on a platform, whatever. So it's not socially acceptable for me to hold you accountable to the Word of God if you claim to be a brother or a sister in Christ. So what we're going to be talking about today is sin. Okay? And my question to you today is, are you the murderer or are you the accomplice to murder? Okay, so that question right there, you might already begin to think that I'm talking about one thing. In, in the court of law, if, if I say we're going to a trial and are you the murderer or the accomplice to murder, you would think we're talking about one case. We're not. We're going to talk about two cases today. And I'm going to ask you again, are you the murderer or the accomplice to murder? And I'm going to explain this to you guys. And I hope you guys really open your ears and may the Holy Spirit speak to your hearts because this is an important message. Okay, so the first question is, are you the murderer? Let me explain this to you. They murdered our Lord and their Savior. They murdered Jesus who murdered Jesus? Was it the Pharisees and them? No. It was sin. Sin murdered our Savior. He went to that cross because of sin. Okay? He died for sin. Amen? He died to be our sacrifice for sin. Okay, sin put him up on that cross. He died up on that cross for sin. He, The Pharisees were just a pawn so that the purpose of the cross could come to pass. Okay? So, let me ask you guys. Are you the murderer? Are you practicing sin? Are you practicing something that you know is wrong? Are you continuing to murder our Savior with your life? Are you continuing to be disobedient? Are you continuing to follow the flesh instead of the Spirit? Are you continuing to murder our Savior? Are you continuing to put him up on that cross because you continually want to live how you want to live outside the will of God and follow your flesh instead of follow the Spirit? Are you the murderer? Are you murdering our Savior? Are you going to be the reason that his wrath is coming? Are you going to be the person that he finds trying to hide under the rock because you're scared? Or is he going to find you Looking and loving him at his appearing. Mm, are you the murderer? Are you continuing to murder him with your thoughts? Are you continuing to murder him with how you treat people? Are you continuing to murder him about how you see yourself? Man, are you the murderer? <laughs> Here's the flip side though. Or are you the accomplice to murder? Amen. Because you know what? Jesus premeditated 
murder. Amen. Jesus is the ultimate murderer. Amen. Because you know what? He killed my pain. He killed my hurts. He killed the things in my life that were hurting him. He killed the sin in my life. Amen. He went up on that cross because he wanted to become a murderer. He wants to kill the enemy out of your life. He wants to kill the pain in your life. He wants to bring healing and restoration. And he did that by the cross. Amen. He wants to kill the sin in you. So that you could go and sin no more. Be perfect as he is perfect. Be holy as he is holy. Be set aside for the work of God that he has called you. Preordained for you to do long ago before the foundation of the earth. Whew. Jesus premeditated murder. He knew that when he went to the cross, he would murder the power of sin and the power of the world on our lives. That is my question to you today. Are you the murderer? Are you continuing to nail our Savior to that cross by the way you're living your life? Are you the accomplice to murder? Are you assisting Jesus in murdering the sin in your life? Are you doing what you need to do so that way He could do what He needs to do in your life? Amen? You know what that means? That means He promises to clean you. He promises. He says in 1 John, He says that He will cleanse us from all unrighteousness and forgive us of all of our iniquities if you will repent. Amen. So we have to repent and be born again if we want to be cleansed. See, there's a cause and effect. We have to have our part. We got to do what we have to do in order for God to do it. He is going to do. Amen. So that's my question today. Are you murdering Jesus every day, how you live your life, or are you assisting him in murdering the things in your life that he wants dead? Amen. Let us be an accomplice with Jesus. Let us be found guilty with the, what Jesus is doing. Let us find be found guilty to bear the name of Jesus because that's a privilege. Amen? Let us pray. Most gracious God, in the name of Jesus Christ, we come to just worship you. We thank you for this day. We thank you for your mercy, your grace that has allowed us, Father, to just be partakers of your air, to be partakers, to have your air in our lungs and our hearts continuing to beat, Lord. It's all because of your grace, Father, and your mercy. Father God, as we see these days drawing near and all, as these days are drawing shorter, Father God, I come before you and I ask, Father God, that we would truly be crucified with Christ. And that it would be no longer us who live, but it would be your spirit, Father God, dwelling within us. And that he would speak his words through us, and that he would live his power through us, that he would anoint us with your presence, Father God, so that everyone who sees us would behold your glory upon us, Father God, that we would speak your life, that we would share your bread and share your living water so that we may never thirst again, Father. Most gracious God, I pray that you would give us the courage, the boldness, the joy, that you would let the fruit of your spirit show in our lives, Father, that it would be evident, Father God, so that we can impact this world before we no longer have time. Father God, your word says that you are only being patient with us. I pray that we don't take your patience for weakness, but that we would take your patience knowing that your patience one day is going to run dry, and one day you're going to send your son to say, go get my church. Go get your bride. Go get your wife. It's time to bring your wife home. She's been gone far too long and I want her home. Father God, we praise you. I pray that we would surrender, Father. Surrender our lives. Surrender our hearts. Surrender our families. Surrender our jobs. Surrender our communities. Surrender our hearts. Surrender our minds. Surrender our eyes, Father God. In the name of Jesus, Father, may the Spirit of God breathe upon us. And bring us to life, Father. May we truly be a strange and peculiar people for you. May we stand out among the nations, Father. For we are your kingdom. Jesus said, don't look there to the left or the right looking for the kingdom of God. For the kingdom of God is at hand. For it is in the heart of man, Lord. So anoint your kingdom, Father God. Unite your kingdom. Unite, unite your body, Father God. Give us your spirit, Father. Let it breathe upon us and give us the authority and the power we need to overcome the darkness in our lives father so we could be an accomplice with you in what you want to achieve in us may your will be done may you be glorified 
And may you receive all the honor, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we pray. Thank you, Father, for hearing us. And just pray that we would open our ears to hear you. And open our hearts to receive your guide, guidance. And we would open our eyes to see as you see. Love you, Father. In the name of Jesus, amen. God bless you guys. You guys have a wonderful day. Assist Jesus. Don't fight against him, but fight with him. And what he wants to accomplish in your life. Because you know what? He can do more. Exceedingly abundantly more than you can think. Or even imagine. In the name of Jesus, guys. Stay blessed.